So I, I had I had two bird certificates. Just copying cartoons, I learned to draw. And this cat was um, kidnapped once. Do you actually know when you're making a masterpiece? No, no, no. Cat. <laughs> yes. So today's visit is in Ana Gutierrez's studio. I was um, originally born in Mexico and I have been living in Finland uh, almost for 11 years. And I'm a visual and sound artist. I use graphite a lot to, to, to make sound and uh, I like to make a lot of noise. How did you decide to come here in the first place? Um, intuition. Uh, first, uh, I came for an exchange at the University of Helsinki, but it was quite a long time ago when I was doing my bachelor's degree. And um, I just thought like, okay, France is the typical where people go, like art, art, art people go to study or back then. And then uh, Germany, I thought like, oh, it maybe it's maybe not my thing. And then I had this book like with the, with the, with all the universities in the world I could choose for, a, for an exchange. And then I was checking like Finland, it's like, that's a weird country. I mean, I didn't even know it was a country that's uh, talking about like maybe 20 years ago or 18. Yeah. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, let's go there. It seems quite far away. It must be very different from, from Mexico in the, because I'm from the desert. So the desert like 40, 45 degrees normal. Like, so I was running away from the, from the heat. So then I just came to Finland and I, I, I did this exchange and for six months and I felt that I kind of uh, adapted very well to this place and I thought like la years later I thought like hey I should go for a master's degree and I did it and I got in into the Alto University and then here I am. So uh, what were you studying back then in, in Mexico? I did a Bachelor of Arts, so basically... Like a general? Yeah, like general training of arts, you know, like uh, they teach you how to draw and like uh, mm. this kind of... I did some lithography and etching and photography, but I was mostly drawing. I was also trying paint, painting, um, but then I have... I don't know, I'm always more comfortable with drawing. That's my, mm -hmm. my main medium, so... I was doing a bit of everything to try and then I did a lot of photography back then, but always drawing. Yeah. And um, I was also making music, but not really together with, with, with the drawing. Yeah. Yeah. So I would always have like a, during the weekends, I would play with my friends and we would play concerts and stuff like that. Yeah. But I was playing drums, like real drums. I, I started as a drummer. Yeah. At some point I discovered that I could make my own instruments and Drums are more like, uh, now like, um, I have these uh, drum machines and synthesizers, mm. yeah. But I would love to play real drums again. Did you know already very early on that you would be an artist later? Or how did that happen? Um, I mean, yeah, basically, um, I started when I was five. I was always like copying this... Um, cartoon drawings like I, I would have like I don't know in, in Mexico we have a lot of um, um, how do you call it fast food and like this really how, how do you trash food like you know these chips and stuff that yeah, uh, yeah. so there, there, <laughs> there were these little like uh, plastic toys like a uh, Ah, uh, as, as a like surprise flat. that comes yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, in the chips or whatever. Oh, we have this too, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah with these characters of... Um, and then I, I will just like like them and then start copying them, like, like, like kind of drawing them. And, but before that, I think I, I started when, when I was... I had a homework when I was five and, and they, they said like, okay, you have to draw something and bring it to the class next day. Homework when you're five? Well, uh, because I, start, I started um, elementary school earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I mean, wow. it's, it's not very surprising. Um, you want to hear the story? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have a sister that she's uh, one year and a half younger than I than I am. So my mother couldn't take care of, of both of us, and at the same time, so she sent me to to the to kindergarten. And when I was five, it was already time for me to go to elementary school. But um, of course, you sh in in back then you should be six. 
So mm -hmm. my mother had some friends in the <laughs> in the bureaucracy, and they made an, another birth certificate for me, <laughs> <laughs> saying that I, I was one year older. Oh, wow. And um, so I, I had I had two birth certificates, and then I I I managed to go to, to school, and to their surprise, I was doing very well, like uh, having like the maximum like good possible grades. So they said, okay, she's she's doing it well, she's ready. So, so there I was, five years old, like, <laughs> with the homework, <laughs> yeah, yeah. with this homework of, uh, I don't know, the, like, uh, uh, you have to do a little drawing and then bring it and And I wanted to draw some trees in a park and I couldn't do it. And a friend of my mother was helping me, like, uh, let's draw this and that. And, and uh, so basically she did it for me. And then the next day I saw that there was this boy and he came with his super nice drawing. And I'm like, I would like to draw like him. And then I just, I was really so jealous, like, wow, I want to draw like that. And then I just started like drawing and just copying cartoons I learned to draw. And then continuing and continuing. And then until I, when was it? I think I also had some in, in high school, like, you know, the basic uh, once, once a week um, club, they called it. And you could choose in between sports or dance or art. And I'm like, sports I'm not doing with this son, like dance is not my thing, like folkloric dance. Uh -huh. So I went to this um, art club and was mainly painting, but it was fun. And yeah, so like that. And then I really, when I really refined my skills was at the university, of course, because then I really had a good teacher. Like, and then in Alto, what was the program that, that, you, was, that uh, you studied? Fine arts. Uh, yeah, we, we, we had this, uh, yeah. It's master master degree in fine arts, and it was Te Mumaki, the the head of the program. That was super cool. And when I arrived, and then we were ten, that was an amazing amazing time. Yeah. And I, I did my a lot of my what is it? Is it minor area? Or, I don't, I mean, well, my 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 thing was arts, and then like this fine arts, and then I I did some media lab stuff. That's yeah. where I learned. Yeah, yeah, all that, and just uh, experimenting. <laughs> But maybe it came from the from the music that you had done before. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This interest yeah. to the sound. Yeah, you know, when I was fifteen, I thought that I would be a musician, but uh, I ended up <laughs> more like a visual artist, sound artist. Yeah. And nowadays, you have performances, almost like a musician type of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's for me, music and sound I, are the same because for some sound that nobody thinks that it's music. For me, I, I find always the rhythm and the, in noise, I found the rhythm and everything. So. I, I just don't make any separation yeah. unless it's really like a sound for a move, like for a film that is very specific and it's not rhythmical or anything. Mm. Mm. Do you do commissions for these kind of projects, like a movie or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, yeah, from documentaries or art films and uh, also for a book. I made it once in the release of a book. They wanted a track. That's actually some of my like side income, mm. and I love it. I think uh, I guess it's because I have this relation of, of um, I don't know. I found the visual part in in sound or the sound in the visual. I don't know how if you can get a bit of. I mean, some people may be connecting that to synesthesia. Or, but it's different, of course. It's yeah, not. it's a bit different. I at the beginning I thought like, ah, what if I work with this team? But no, it, it wasn't really what I was doing, and it didn't feel right. And I don't know, it's maybe my my personal connection. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Then in your drawings, you you draw mostly animals. Yeah. Why? Well, I <laughs> I was also drawing uh, people in nature. Well, I I would like to also combine more with nature, but for the projects that I have in mind now, but um, I, I don't know, animals are always used as a commodity and like kind of, um, we see them like that we're, or many people, I don't know, I don't want to say that we, but pe some people like see them like we're superior, we eat them, we treat them the way we want, but they are also like independent beings and they have their own life and they don't need us to be like, uh, to have them on a leash or, mm. so I think it's, Mostly, like I try to give them their own voice. I, in in the very first series of drawings that I did, I combined it with uh, humans. There were persons and animals and, and nature. It was, yeah, it was more like a kind of surreal stuff. 
but then I decided to simplify it like without humans. Maybe somebody could say that it's like a post-human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Post-human art. And I was also reading a lot of uh, Derrida and, and you, you know, he has this, uh, he's basing his philosophy on animals and he's also constantly asking about the question of the animals and all this team and how we treat them. And, and so it, it kind of got into me this background of I have to do something about it. And, Mm, what are you doing at the moment? I have this, well, all the, these new works are, are, in ex, are being exhibited right now in, in Vita Kuben, which is a gallery from in the opera in Umeå in Sweden. And I'm combining um, electronic components on paper, like the, the, they are part of the composition, because I always did these drawings and sound like like I finished the drawing and then I would make the sound for it or the other way around. I had the sound and then I made the drawing for it. And then I was doing some sort of installations. And I thought like, hey, I would like to the drawing to sound like if you see it, like you can hear it. But uh, I got the good news that it will be in Anantalo in autumn. So you nice. can see it. But anyway, when, when is it going to be in Anantalo? Um, it's... I'm not sure, but uh, it's part of, it's a Moon Galleria exhibition together with Anantalo. I think it's mm. September, something like that. There's a drawing and then I, I like, I was drawing some insects, uh, kind of fantastic insects, because in the body there's uh, speakers. So mm. I, I, in, I was drawing and I made the holes on the paper for the speaker. So if you see the drawing, it's, um, you see, the only components you see are the speakers. Mm. And then on the back, I was uh, building this little circuit. So then you hang the piece on the wall, like a normal drawing, but then there's a little cable, maybe going to the ceiling where the technology is hiding, and then, and then the, the, the drawing is playing the sound. Mm. And the thing is that um, the sound that I made is from the drawing, because I have this uh, instrument that I, I build in Alto that uh, sonifies graphite, because graphite is conductive. Yeah. So I, instead of plugging an instrument to this, to the circuit, I was plugging like two bars of graphite or two pencils. And then I, at the moment you touch the paper and start drawing uh -huh. and connect two lines, then you, you hear the sound like wing, wing, wing. And then of course I was adding some effects to make it more rich. And uh, so I can record the actual moment of when I'm drawing. So you can really listen to the drawing. Oh, that's nice. And then I, I made uh, some tracks. I mean, I was editing and kind of making a composition, little composition to, so you see the drawing and you hear it and then there's some, like, I don't know, some combination. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing nowadays. Oh, I'm very happy to, to hear that it will be in Anantawa so that yeah, yeah. you can actually experience it also. Yeah, and I'm also preparing a new, a new set of music. Yeah, really, I'm hooking up like three drum machines, synthesizers, and starting new like uh, noisy techno stuff. A lot of cables here behind us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing also on this space, we, Marco and I, are, we just founded the Early Titan Sera, which would be in English, the Sound Art Society. And it's quite funny because... Isn't there already something like that? Not like that with that name. There's this, um, what's the name of? Anne and Lumo. This, this uh -huh. uh, sound of charm. I mean, the, there's, there's not many. I mean, there, I think there's only them and, and uh, our new, newly founded. But still, sound art is quite marginal in Helsinki. I mean, in, we have been talking that in other like in, in Berlin, like people queue to see sound art. There's a lot of public for gallery, like to go to galleries and a lot of audience. And here, like you, you do something with sound art and you have maybe 10 people in a concert. And it's like, mm. <laughs> it's a bit like um, depressing. So we decided like we have to do something. Oh, there you go, it. you have to develop the field now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we are planning to have some events, some concerts. And uh, we got funding from Helsinki in Kaupunki. Nice. To do a little festival, so that will also come in autumn. In, in September or later? Maybe, um, maybe August, September, that's still like 
nice weather. <laughs> yeah, when people still go out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So have to follow to see uh, how things go with that. Do you have some other main themes in your work? Main what it is themes. kind of about? Well, I I like a lot to work with the theme of death <laughs> because death is also something beautiful. It's also this cliche that we have in Mexico, you know, the day of the dead. Mm. But I don't know, for me it's also, there's some beauty in, in death that, I don't know, the, the, the energy we have in the body, it leaves the body and it goes to the universe. I mean, somewhere, it, it goes somewhere, who knows where, to a distant galaxy or whatever. So I, I have this kind of spiritual thinking and connection when I'm drawing. And so I don't really mention this kind of theme when I like when I have an exhibition or anything, but it's always in the back of my works. And I was recently working with the uh, uh, I, I, super organisms. Like I discovered this term um, somehow that uh, you know you have uh, several um, individuals that. Uh, they and they when they work together they make a community and 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 they they kind of unify and and make a single piece out of it and then so that's what i'm doing with my drawings that uh, i have several drawings with speak, speakers let's say in this exhibition i have i have seven drawings mm -hmm. and uh they they are like individuals but they are also a community then when you enter the room then you hear all of them like playing in unison so I know that you have worked with other artists before, like with Laura. Mm -hmm. You had uh, uh, duo performances. Mm -hmm. um, have you had other collaborations like that? Yeah, I was also playing with Juan Duarte. I think you I have might have seen met him maybe yeah. in the media lab, but mm -hmm. I, yeah, can't really say that I know him. When when I started with. Uh, drawing and sound at the same time and and uh, he would help me with the visuals and we, we would like play to because we, we were friends like uh, we we're friends and we were making music together sometimes and we thought like hey let's just do a project together when when we started third space the gallery um which you are kind kind of like a founder of yeah yeah with Juan that, that we thought like hey why don't we play at, at, at the space that we have now let's organize this kind of sound night and then we we invited a, a couple of artists and then we had a full house. It was so much fun. And then I thought like, hey, why don't we just organize this every month? And that's how Sound Room was born. Yeah. But I would like to play more in clubs because that's where people really are not afraid to dance. But if you play in a sound art event, people are a bit like shy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do now. Like, um, play for bigger audiences and like not only artistic like sound art or like gallery it's like I just want it like to be in, in clubs yeah and have you approached any clubs to say hey can I you know uh, in your club? I'm into that because I'm I'm releasing a, a record and I will I want to have the material like I'm just preparing that music and I want to have the material to say hey yeah you know, this yeah. is what I do so can I play? <laughs> yeah, but I, I have been invited to play in many, many, like not many clubs or festivals and stuff like that. So, well, good luck with that. I hope that they, I mean, why wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, to yeah. something new. Yeah. Do you have any specific routines of how you work, like in, in your process? Mm, when I draw, I listen a lot of music, and that's kind of a lot of inspiration for me. I like to have the studio very clean, and like really arranged, because then it, I don't know, then it's easier to work. And sometimes I also like check books. Like before that, I just like take books and see them. Well, nowadays my I have to stick a bit to a routine of really working in the mornings and then four o'clock picking up my son from kindergarten. Yeah, you're now a mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that that also makes me a bit more efficient with my time because, you know, before I would just maybe, let's say, procrastinate or like get a lot of inspiration, like really taking my time. Yeah. But now it's really like, okay, focus and do this and do that. And yeah, it's, it's also good. I mean, I like it to have a bit of like 
really, uh, we call it like a little life, like, hey, just like wake up and mm. do it. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I mean, being an artist and a mother at the same time, it's a bit problematic, maybe, for the majority of the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just, uh, yeah, combining these two together. It's... Mostly at the beginning when the kids are quite young, because then that's when they need, mostly need the mother, but luckily we have something called kindergarten. I don't know how good it is. <laughs> But uh, we were lucky that uh, our son was with us until he was four. So he had a good basis and I was also taking him to sound checks and to concerts. He hasn't still been there with me because concerts are usually quite late. I have been rehearsing and he has been playing here with me, like well, himself. Like he, I give him some toys or, or some paper to draw and then I'm playing. And yeah. Then, yeah, that I can do. And I guess soon I will be able to draw if he's, if he's around because now he's he doesn't need me so much that uh, like uh, mm. yeah. has he been interested in the in the instruments? Yeah, and, yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah, he says that he wants to build his own instruments. Have you ever been in a creative block? What's a creative block? <laughs> like, well, I mean, if you ask me, maybe you haven't. But <laughs> <laughs> like, when you just feel blocked and you can't ah, do your a thing. creative block. Yeah, yeah. It's uh -huh. Actually, it happened to me before becoming a mother. I thought, like, I just need a break. I think I, I don't know. My break started, like, I, I really so it had was a good break. timing yeah. then for yeah, you. It was, it was a good timing. It wasn't really planned to go like that, but, like, yeah. And, yeah. and that was nice because then I just wasn't forced to do any art. I didn't, I mean, because at some point it's, I mean, nowadays art can also become really, like, you are just uh, forced to produce and produce and mm. produce so you can uh, earn a living. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, as artist, I mean, at least I, I just cannot produce something new every day or like, or every year, like I have a project and I like to continue it for several years or, or like to kind of take a further step. And also not every day you're in the mood for mm. making a masterpiece or like, I don't know, there's... Do you actually know when you're making a masterpiece? No, no, no. <laughs> Normally I start drawing and then I finish the piece and I'm like, ah, oh, I don't like it. I cannot see it. And then I just put it somewhere. And then, then I have this process of accepting it. And, and some I like at the beginning that usually is like, no, no, I don't like it. It's like, I, can, I cannot see it. And, mm. But then at the end it's like, wow, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the way you went out of that creative block was just a bit more natural there. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Just uh, focusing on life and like just uh, maybe simple things of life, just uh, enjoying a peaceful moment or going for walks or mm. just like that. Or you know, smelling a newborn is like, wow, it's the, beautiful. <laughs> the best smell I, I know. <laughs> it, uh, only, only parents know it because it's like hormones. For mm. like, oh. mm, it must be. Yeah, and also like, I mean, I think it's quite normal to have it sometimes, and mm. these blocks. I, I, I thought you were saying, like, have you had a, or have you been a creative, you, did you say, have you been in a creative block? And I'm like, is it like a block of creatives, like a block of a building? <laughs> like, you know, like, ah, uh, no, am no. I missing something? <laughs> Maybe I mean, yeah, here, you know, here they have in Finland the Taitelia Talo thing, yeah. which is literally a block of creation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I felt like, hey, am I missing, did I miss something these four years? <laughs> ah, no, no. But that's an interesting take on it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe let's talk a bit about the studio. Uh, mm -hmm. You said that this is a new space you're in. Mm -hmm. You recently came here. How big is the space? Only my studio or the whole complex? Well, up. let's I, start with your room. Uh, I think this might be, I used to know it, but might be around 21, in between 21, 24 square meters, something like that. Mm. And it, I don't know, for me it seems big, like huge. I don't know, it feels it's just the right space. And then you're sharing, kind of sharing yeah. the space? Yeah, we had the center, like the kitchen in the center and then... At the entrance, there's Marco studio, and then we will divide it because officially, this would be five rooms, but when, but when there's like a, a wall missing, of course, it's only three, because in, mm. in the in the the room where you get in, there's two rooms, but there's no wall, mm -hmm. so that we want to divide that, 
and uh, that will be the space we will use for sound art events. Yeah, like a sound gallery. Yeah, kind of not really a gallery because who knows, but we start with concerts and uh, gatherings and events like uh, mm. everything related to sound and at the beginning maybe not exhibitions. So sound is more prevalent in your mind than the visuals at this point? Um, well, if I'm doing drawing, of course, it's equally. Mm. But then, yeah. But yeah, I mean, in my practice, I guess nowadays it's maybe 70% sound. Can you share some of your places of inspiration? What is working Place. for you <clears throat> to inspire you? I mean, and this could be like a physical places around mm. or, or a book um, or a movie or something like that? Well, music for me is, like, it's, I would say, my main source of inspiration and and also cycling, because cycling, I don't know, it helps me to, I know that you get some adrenaline, but it also helps me to clear my head and, and if I'm like, I don't know, mad or sad or something, I just take my bike and whoosh, off I go somewhere. Usually have uh, books with animals, any kind of, it doesn't matter the language. Um, I have this one with a lot of insects that I was also using for my drawings, like to get some uh, uh, idea of dimensions and bodies. I get inspiration from this kind of altars, like I make myself this kind of, um, you know, objects that uh, make me feel in peace, like uh, maybe that also fits to the ritual. If you uh -huh. have any rituals, but I, I always like to have like these little elements in my studio. Like I have these candles like here that I oh, yeah. turn on when I play. I always collect this kind of also, I would collect dead animals, mm. but mostly insects. And I have also chicken legs and I was playing drums with a um, goat leg also <laughs> <laughs> that I got in Mexico. And, yeah, so here I have some horns and teeth and deer horn and so I, these objects also help me to mm. to set the, let's say, the environment of my studio. And maybe lastly, uh, what would be some artists that you have been inspired some by or that you like? Arturo Rivera, he has this very realistic way of drawing but combining with medicine. Because I think he studied medicine, so he would also like uh, paint uh, amazing bodies with uh, some kind of mystic and obscure surroundings and yeah he's, he's so talented and Arturo Rivera has been like one of my main inspirations also when I was younger like into art so. mm -hmm. there's uh, Marta Pacheco she's also Mexican from her I don't have I don't know if she's still alive um, but she will do even more obscure like more uh, they also work a bit with this team, and I don't know if it's because, I mean, cliche thing, if we are all Mexicans, but uh, <laughs> but we have this relation also. They had it also, like... With the death. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't read about, well, maybe from Arturo Rivera, I read it some sometime, uh, but not from her, but uh, yeah, I mean, you see it in their works. How, in Spanish, would be El Bosco. Bosch? Bo Geronimos? Geronimos Bosch. Wow, yeah, yeah he's like huh? one of my... Maybe top ten. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's amazing also to see his paintings live. Mm. I don't. I don't think I have seen his paintings. Mm. In in Spain they have. This mm. I have seen. In I think in Barcelona in Madrid they have. Well, thank you, Anna, so much for for letting me here today. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You're very welcome to Catayanoca. <laughs> that we didn't say before. Mm. Yeah, yeah, where the studio is located. Yeah. In Catayanoca in Helsinki. So. Yeah, but uh, I guess, of course, when you start doing events, mm -hmm. it will become pretty clear yeah. pretty soon. <laughs>